The title of God's message for today is N-O-T-W. If you see this word in the back windshield of the car that says N-O-T-W, you can now know the meaning because the meaning of N-O-T-W is not of the world. It was mentioned twice in John 17 during the prayer of Jesus to his disciples. In John 17 verse 14 and 17, Jesus said, They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I was given a topic for today's message about consecration. Consecration means separation, means sanctification, or means setting apart, or means N-O-T-W, not of this world. I believe everyone knows that there's only one way going back to our home, going back to heaven, and that way is Jesus. Jesus is the only way. By the blood of Jesus, we are redeemed. By the blood of Jesus, we were justified. Justified means just if I'd never sinned. So the first step of salvation is justification. And the next step is what we are right now. We are in consecration. We are in the process of sanctification. Also known as setting apart or separation from this world. We are not of this world. Of course, the fullness of salvation is one day in heaven. And that step is called glorification. So I know you know already the three steps of salvation. Justification, consecration, and glorification. And we are now in this second st stage which is the consecration. Amen. We are in the setting apart stage. For this message of God today for us all, we will focus on one context of the scriptures found in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 16 up to chapter 7, verse 1. So the first point is how to be consecrated, how to be separated, how to be sanctified. So we will get some way, some steps, or some tips of how to be consecrated. But it's not limited to four. But out of this context, we can get four ways to be consecrated. Four ways to be sanctified. So number one can be found in verse 16. Number one way of how to be consecrated is first is to acknowledge that you are the temple of the living God. Same as we receive the Lord Jesus Christ as we during our salvation. The first step is to acknowledge that we are a sinner and we need a savior. Same also in consecration. First, we must acknowledge that we are the temple of the living God. In verse 16, it says, and what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. God is holy. We all know that. So live a holy life. Because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And if you live holy, the Holy Spirit will hover, will move, will manifest in you mightily. Number two, way 
ways how to be consecrated is found in chap in verse 17. It says, Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. So number two, come out from the world system. But instead, come in to the godly system. It is a command for us, my brothers and sisters. It is a command for us to come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. So welcome everyone to godly system and say goodbye to worldly system. Number three, it's just a continuation of verse 17. It says, do not touch what is unclean. So number three, do not touch what is un unclean. Instead, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts Him. Amen. And also can be found in verse, uh, in chapter 7, verse 1. It says, Cleanse yourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. So number 3, do not touch what is unclean. Number 4, the last one. It's just a continuation of chapter 7, verse 1. It says, Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So, number four way, fear of the Lord. Sounds like my brothers and sisters is tough. It's hard to be, to, be, to be perfect, right? But you see, the word says perfecting holiness. It doesn't say perfect holiness meaning as we walk in this journey called life we must work towards perfection we must live towards perfection because right now every one of us is a work in process the most important thing is walking into holiness so you get the, the four ways to be consecrated out of this context. Acknowledge that you are a temple of the living God. Come out from the worldly system. Do not touch what is unclean. And fear of God. Now what? Now what? When you observe consecrated and separated way of life of course there are benefits and everyone loves benefits right everyone love like perks we all like perks right and there are four perks or three perks three perks or three benefits of living a life living a separated or consecrated life out of this context. Number one benefits can be found in verse 16. It says, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. So number one benefit, God's presence in us. This is our present promise now. The presence of God. And we define peace in this present or in this generation as peace is not the absence of troubles, but the presence of God during troubles. Amen. So number one benefit, if you, have, if you live a consecrated life, God's presence in us. Number two, God will receive us. And it's a picture about the future. It's also a picture in the past when we come into Jesus, came into Jesus and surrender our life to Him during 
during the first step, which is the justification, God will receive us. God love us. No ifs, no buts. But God receive us wholeheartedly. Not remembering our sins. Not remembering our bad past. And this picture in, in this context is about the future. God will receive us. It says in verse 17, And I will receive you. And as I mentioned, it's a future benefit. In John 14, 3, it says, Jesus said, And I go and prepare a place for you, and I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. It's also the picture of the rapture. The Lord Jesus Christ will meet each every one of us in the air. And thus, we shall always be with the Lord. What a beautiful benefit that one day Jesus will receive us open arms. So live a consecrated life. Number three, from, from verse 18, And I will be the father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So number three benefits of living a consecrated life, God will be our father. Amen. What a beautiful. So number three, so the three perks are God's presence in us. God will receive us. God will be our father. Of course, there are cons or there are also disadvantages if we will not live a consecrated life. Those disadvantages, of course, are the opposite of the three perks. Number one, disadvantages of not living a consecrated life is the absence of God. The absence of God because we're grieving, we're quenching the Holy Spirit. And number two, of course, God will not receive us. God will not receive us in the future, meaning you will not be included in the rapture. And you will go through the seven years great tribulation. So live a consecrated life because you don't know. Because the Bible said in Matthew 24, 13, those who endure to the end will be saved. And endurance is badly needed in the seven years great tribulation. Three disadvantage of not living a consecrated life. Your father is a liar. In John 8, 44, you are of your father, the devil. And this desires of your father, you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. So we don't want that the devil is our father. We only want God our father. We can call him Abba father. And number four, this advantage of not living a consecrated life. And this is found in Revelation 18.4. It is about the future. It's a prophecy. In Revelation 18.4, it says, Then I heard another voice calling from heaven, Come away from her, my people. Do not take part in her sins, or you will be punished with her so number four this advantage of not living a consecrated life is the god's punishment or god's wrath so now what 
Now what? We already know the, the ways how to be sanctified. But I will give another one. I hope you will remember this. You will remember this, my brothers and sisters, because it's easy to remember. Maybe you, if you forgot already what, what the Lord's message a while ago. But I hope you will remember this one. How to be sanctified uh, in easy way. In John 17, 17, Jesus said, Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also be sanctified by the truth. So my brothers and sisters, there's a, a way, the best way that you will remember how to be sanctified. And that sanctification is by the truth. And the truth can only be found in Jesus. And the truth can only be found as well in the Bible. And the Bible is the best investment before leaving earth. I know some of you are in the cryptocurrency uh, investment, in stock exchange investment. But you know what? They are all temporal. We must invest into eternal. And the best investment before leaving earth is the Bible. That's why Bible means best investment before leaving earth. Amen. So I'd like to end this short message by quoting this famous scripture that every one of us knows in John 14.6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know what? You can see here the process of our salvation. First, when Jesus said, I am the way, that's the justification. Because there's only way to be saved and that's through the blood of Jesus, through the cross. We can only be saved through faith by grace and already been paid by the blood of Jesus Christ. And in the world that we live in right now, we are already justified, but in the world that we live in right now, we are living separately of this world we are living not of this world we are living a sanctified life and we need the truth we need the truth because the bible said sanctify by the truth i am the way justification the truth consecration and the life and that life is eternal life that life is everlasting life. And that is the fulfillment of our salvation. And that's the time we are all glorified. We are all glorified. And that's glorification. Amen? Jesus said, no one comes to the Father except through me. Only Jesus. We need Jesus Christ in our life. Amen. Brothers and sisters, in the future to come, especially when we're going back to heaven, there is already perfection, there is prosperity, there is peace, and that peace is shalom, nothing lacking, nothing broken, nothing missing. And let's declare corporately in advance and full of hope. Welcome home. Amen. So can we rise up 
everyone. And let's all sing this song as a form of prayer and with a an hope of pure expectation. Heart of pure expectation. Let's hope that one day the Lord Jesus Christ open his arms wide and saying to each and every one of us, Welcome home! Well done, my good and faithful servant. God bless everyone. Shalom. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. Amen.